This is Twit. Microsoft Windows Threshold. Uh, a little bit of news is trickling out about it. Uh, we, we now know a little bit about how it works and uh, the technology that goes into it. But why should we care? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, wow! I, I I actually wasn't prepared for that question. So <laughs> I, I was I was just thinking something along the lines of you know this is kind of Mary Jo's story. I mean, and but I, I now that you say it like that, I, I guess I will throw in one thing, which is that um, I'm always amazed each time a new version of Windows comes around the corner, whether it's Windows 8, Windows 8 1, even so, you know kind of a minor release or Threshold and how big of a deal it is. Um, and for all of the talks, you know, uh, Windows is doomed. Everyone's using Android and iOS. Um, PCs are yesterday. New version of Windows comes out and the whole world stops and pays attention. And so, you know, the, the why of it, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I mean, uh, obviously we all, not we all, but most of us rely on Windows to some degree. And I think there's still uh, a lot of interest in the platform, you know, and, and, I mean, I know there is for us, obviously, we cover Windows for a living and, and uh, we know a lot about Microsoft, but I just think in the wider world, it's one of those things that gets discounted, how popular this stuff really is. Mary Jo, Friendly Manitoba in the chat room is saying we should care because, well, this fixes Windows 8. Does this, does this really <laughs> fix Windows 8? Because they said that about Windows 8.1. Oh, this, is, this fixes the things that people hate about Windows 8. Is, is this just that again, or do, do you actually believe that this is going to address most of the issues that people have with how Windows 8 operates? I do. I think, I think Microsoft, you know, they haven't wanted to say that Windows 8 is Vista 2.0, but Windows 8 is Vista 2.0, pretty much. And even if you like Windows 8, even if you found a way to make your peace with Windows 8, you've got it to work the way you want it to work, for most people... The, I, I'd say not the people who watch this podcast necessarily, but the er, er, everyday people out in the street, they think Windows 8 is a failure. So Microsoft really needs to come up with something that looks different, works differently, and most of all, convinces Windows 7 users that it's safe to come back into the Windows pool. And they're going to have a different experience with Start, which Paul uh, wrote quite a bit about this week that I think is going to work a lot better. They're going to have different SKUs that are tailored more to the hardware. So if you have, say, a really small um, tablet or a phone, you're going to have a SKU on there that does not have the desktop we're hearing. And I think that makes sense. It's a very jarring experience for many people still to go between the desktop and the Metro style environment. So they're really tailoring these SKUs to the type of hardware you have. If you have a hybrid two-in-one tablet, you're going to have a different experience when your keyboard is attached versus when your keyboard is unattached. And I think this is going to be good. It's going to auto-detect, basically, what you're running and have the correct experience show up. I, I also do believe that you'll still be able to change a lot of the defaults, too. So if you're someone who does actually love the tiled interface and you don't want to have the mini start menu that they're coming up with, I think you're going to have the option to opt out of that and have have Windows the way you want to have it. Yeah, that's that's what I had heard uh, specifically yeah. was that the that start experience, um, you know, would default in certain ways depending on the type of machine you have, much like the way the computer boots today does. But that if you preferred one or the other, you could switch it however you wanted. So if you had a an x86 type tablet and wanted the start menu for some reason, that would be fine. But if you wanted that full screen experience on a desktop computer, like you would have today in Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, um, you could do that as well. Yeah. So Mary Jo, we, we've got these three new SKUs. We've got, you know, modern, no desktop. We've got the hybrid, again, as you said, the two and the one. We've got, we've got the desktop version. It, my question to you is, is this, is this, is this a retreat? Is this just an adjustment or are we saying, okay, Microsoft has finally figured out that different users will use Windows different ways according to the devices that they have and they can have one operating system but give it three different looks and feels? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd say a retreat. I, and, and even if it is a retreat, I think it doesn't really matter at this point. What they built didn't work for many people who don't have touch laptops or touch tablets. And they still have a very large installed base who are trying to run Windows PCs, Windows laptops, traditional desktops. And for them, they need a different experience because they're very hooked in with their mouse and keyboard. So I think the assumption when they were building Windows 8 three plus years ago was 
there would be a ton of touch tablets in the market and maybe the traditional devices would be gone by now, but they're not gone. And people are still very wedded to using mouse and keyboard. So I think they've come to the realization, like we've got to build for what people want and what, and our main customer base is still the enterprise, even though we're trying to go after consumers and we have to build what these people want. 